Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of The Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I speak with fine art photographer Heather Evans-Smith about how she got started in the fine art photography world, her creative process, and how you can walk a similar path. Check it out. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey. Heather. Hi. Fellow North Carolinian. Yes. You're one of the few North Carolinians I think I've interviewed. Really? Yes, and we're here in North Carolina. I know. Specifically Durham. Yes, very convenient. Very yes. convenient. Yes, and you're in Winston-Salem. Yes. Um, which is actually interesting because I want to talk to you about not just your work and your creative process, but your career because a lot of people feel like they have to be in a major city if they want to be you know, a fine art a photographer or a gallery or do books or something like that, and that's not been the case for you. No, and I would say thank God for the internet. Yeah. Because how I started out in photography was a complete accident. Um, I had a career in graphic design and I had taken darkroom photography in college and loved it, but because I didn't have a dark room and I just never pursued it anymore. And eventually I said, I'm, I'm not going to let that go by any longer. And I got a simple camera started taking pictures and I put it on Flickr. Okay. And it was just a complete About accident. how long ago was this? This was 2007. Okay. So it wasn't really that long ago. Right. And I saw all these other artists doing self portraits and that's where I started. And it kind of snowballed from there. And then people started hiring me for things. And soon after that, I was asked to speak in Australia. And this all came from just, you know, getting a camera, putting it online. And then from then I had a career change. So people would reach out to you having seen your photographs on Flickr and then ask you and hire you to do work. Right. Okay, got it. Right. And what would you say is the main focus? Because um, you know, going through your website, we see it's a combination of different work. Right. You know, what would you say is your kind of main focus or areas of focus? I guess right now my main focus is my fine art work because that's what I'm most passionate about. But mm -hmm. I also do a little commercial work, a little conceptual portrait photography um, where I'm hired by other people. But my main focus is working on my series. I have one with my daughter right now. Because um, that's where my true passion lies. Mm -hmm. like, I stay awake at night with these ideas that, and they'll drive me crazy I or actually shoot them. <laughs> yeah, so that's my... I know that feeling. Like. Yeah. <laughs> driving you crazy. Yeah, so that's my... My focus. Yes. So when you when you set out to do um, a conceptual project, is it something where you are you say you're laying awake at night? Is it something where you're graphing it out or storyboarding or coming up with ideas in advance and then you just go do it, or is it something where you have a general idea, you get started, and maybe you have happy accidents? Like, what is your creative process? There are times when I'm in the car, I hear lyrics to a song, and I think of the image immediately in my head. But I can't always shoot it, maybe till a year later. It's like all the stars have to align, whether I need a model or a location. But as long as I jot it down, I feel like it's somewhat out of my head where mm -hmm. I can rest. And then sometimes something will come on, it's an accident, um, I see something in the house or the way a light is, and immediately I get my camera ready and shoot it. So it's, it's kind of jumbled up all over the place. Um, but yeah, anything like a vintage item in a store might spawn a whole idea or just an emotion I'm feeling or a music lyric. And then how did you start taking kind of these ideas and then being able to kind of go to the, I mean a lot of people love the idea of fine art photography but don't know how to capitalize it, don't know how to take it to the next level and be able to show it, be in a gallery, you know, do a book, things like that. How does all that roll out for you? How did you get started with that? Well for me, it, you start small. I contacted um, local art groups and um, guilds in town and they always provided opportunities to show your work and that was a good way for me to experience you know having it framed and matted and shown um, and then I started reaching out to bigger cities um, but locally kind of more Charlotte and Raleigh and, right. and get my name out there and then from there I reached out to um, the Jennifer Schwartz Gallery in Atlanta mm -hmm. and then I ended up being represented by her, um, she doesn't have her gallery anymore, she does more nonprofit. But you know, that's kind of the steps I took, kind of going a yeah. little bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then when I felt confident, I started just this year going to photo reviews. And that way my work could be put out in front of gallerists and um, different people in the industry all around the country. And that really helped. 
But I found that at these reviews, now that I've been, you know, spent several months, that a lot of the connections I've made were with other photographers there. Ah. We look out for each other. Yeah. Um, like I've gotten jobs, like helping mentor people at universities from other photographers that I met there. And your and your work is very much photography. You're not um, into massive composites or super detailed Photoshop work, correct? I did more of that a few years ago, but I was very... Um, you did more of the... More composites, but the way that I shot, I didn't want to take things from different places and put them together. Everything was shot where it was. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, there's an image called Collide, and it's a woman with all these black and white beach balls all around her. And I had two people on each side throw in the balls. So they're there. They may not have been there the way the model was there, but that way the light was right. I just right. and it fools the eyes. A lot of people have looked at it and like, what this how could this have happened? But yet it looks like it did happen. So that was my goal. Right. To make it look real. And it becomes almost performance art while we're shooting. Yeah. Just to create these things in front of our eyes. So. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned about um, how things look when the light hits it. That's probably one of the biggest um, uh, issues I've seen with some composite work is that people aren't necessarily paying attention to that. Right. Yeah. And I think if you And go, it's jarring. You don't even know exactly why. Yeah, you know, something's not quite right. But if they go way on the other end of it and it, you know it's not supposed to Yeah, it's surreal. Like, then that's that's another thing that yeah. can be beautiful. Right. That's its um, own thing. But I like it to look, you know, like it happened. And how did you get to the point where you've got a book coming out? When is your book coming out? Um, next spring. Okay. It's for the work that I've been doing with my daughter. It's called Seen Not Heard. Seen Not Heard. And that, um, that all came from when I um, contacted Jennifer Schwartz in Atlanta and she decided to represent me. I met her and David Graham who runs Fraction Magazine. And they've been a great supporter of my work and they started a publishing side to their business which is Flash Powder Projects. Okay. And so we're working on the book and I'm very excited. Um, you know, it's in the very beginning stages of designing that, putting that together. What does Seen Not Heard mean? Seen Not Heard, um, I'll kind of back up a little bit. Um, when I was doing the series The Heart and the Heavy, mm -hmm. which was from maybe four years ago, um, I felt all these different emotions becoming a mother, and I shot images based on that, but my daughter was never in any of these images. So she turned four, and I knew we didn't have a lot of time left with just me and her at the house, so I wanted to kind of pour into my world of photography, especially at a time when emotions were sort of running high. I'm sure they continue to for a while. Um, <laughs> And just to explore different things about the mother-daughter relationship. Because um, even though we're always going to have this close forever bond, we're two different individuals. Mm -hmm. And it's been, um, it's been very interesting working with her. It's, we've been two years now working on this project. Interesting. Yeah. And, and did that title come to you for a specific reason? Well, I thought about kind of that old English adage to be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. And that, that's sort of the desired behavior of children. Right. And just started thinking about all those different things that traditions that we keep or new ones we want to have. And I, I look a lot about that fine line between protecting your child and possessing your child. Mm -hmm. and, um, because as she gets older and I get older, I'm finding that, you know, that is a hard line, you know, to find. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just exploring different ideas with her. So where can people see more of your work, um, not only just online, but also out in the physical world? Yeah, well, there's a, a lot of opportunities coming up. Um, several pieces from Seen Not Heard will be in the Elder Gallery in Nebraska in January. Mm -hmm. I think January through February. Um, it's going to be in the 555 Gallery in Boston in May. And then there'll be a solo exhibit in Fort Collins, Colorado in September. Okay. Yeah. And, and the book's coming out in spring? Yes. Wonderful. And online? Yes, you can find me at heatherevansmith.com. Perfect. And, and yes. do you do social media from there? I do. I all right. do. Yep. You'll see all the buttons there. Okay. So. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yes, I really appreciate thank you. it. 
Thanks so much for joining us here on Redefine Show. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV. And don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for some wonderful photography content. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.